Hey guys, so this will be my third time trying to film this, and, uh, yeah. The first time I talked for 20 minutes, and there was zero audio, and the second time I just filmed for, I don't know, like a minute, just to do kind of like a test run to see if the audio was gonna work, and it didn't, so, um, then I guess I found out that the microphone was muted, so I'm just gonna stop and see if this one actually has audio. Raise him! We have audio. Oh my god. Okay, so um, I'm pretty bummed that I lost, technically, I lost the first video because like I said, I was talking for 20 minutes and even though it was kind of messy and unscripted and all over the place and didn't really make any sense, I kind of loved how it came out and was really looking forward to editing out the little blank spots so that it just flowed a little bit easier and kind of sitting through and listening to it and didn't get that option. Um, but regardless, here we are, audio is working, so let me get into it. Uh, first things first, I wanted to talk about <laughs> the giveaway. So the giveaway was kind of a flop, which, um, I don't know, it, it, it was supposed to be for 19k subscribers and um, we didn't make that, not even close. But on the plus side, we were like a hundred and something short of 18k retro dolls and we have exceeded 18k and since the giveaway included a bathing suit and it's fucking September, I think I'm just gonna say fuck it. If you did what you were supposed to do and you entered the giveaway by being subscribed, liking, and commenting on the giveaway video, then you are entered and I'm gonna pick a winner and um, I will, you know, go about that whole process and announce that. I'll include the winner at the end of this video. Like, I'll put a little screenshot of that shit and you guys can see who the winner is because as soon as I get done filming this, then I am going to uh, go through the comments on that video and pick somebody at random and then I'm gonna see if they like the video and if they're subscribed and if they meet those requirements, then here we are, the winner. So, I don't know, I kind of want to talk about, like, what's going on in my life, all this kind of stuff, um, what I've been up to. So, if you don't follow me on the retro vlogs, then you're probably kind of like, where the fuck has she been? She's posting really sporadically, and it's because I am, like always, crazy busy, which is, I think, a really awesome problem to have. Um, when I was working at Supercuts, I worked there for two years. A lot of you asked me how it was um, working for them and I will say it was a learning experience. They definitely helped me pick up my speed as a stylist, or as like a hair cutter. Basically that's kind of like the only thing they really like focused on. Um, anyways, yeah, so they helped with that. They helped me build, help, yeah, they helped me build a clientele. Um, but really aside from that it was mostly just a paycheck because there was a lot of bullshit that I put up with that I didn't need to and I was kind of just there because I needed to make money to pay for a wedding which by the way it's gonna be my one year wedding anniversary on the 19th of this month how fucking crazy that is that it's already been a year it's insane anyways um but yeah so that's how working at Supercuts was, um, but when I worked there, I worked there for two years full time, so I was kind of on this crazy schedule, and so my channel kind of took a hit from that. Like, I didn't really get to post very often, and when I did, I felt like I wasn't fully there, like, present in the videos, because I was kind of just felt obligated to post videos, and... Legally, I wasn't able to just sit down and be honest with you and tell you there are some fucking bitches I'm putting up with that are setting me on edge. Yeah, um, but <laughs> that's not my problem anymore. So here we are. Um, yeah. So now that I'm doing all that, I feel like God kind of put me in a place to be blessed to be very blunt, literally that first day after my like first client at the new salon, I got a call um, that JC Penney's wanted to work with me and help promote their Boutique Plus line and um, you know help promote Ashley Nell Tipton and her 
line, her fall line with the boutique inside JCPenney's, which is her plus size line. And I was just like, uh, hell yeah, hell yeah. And so I got contracted. I was blessed to work with them from July. Oh, was it? Yeah. From like early July all the way to, I think today was the last push. Um, cause today was like the launch for Ashley Tipton's line inside JCPenney's. So yeah, um, if you want to check that out, you can go check that out. Ashley Nell Tipton, I'm going to be putting out a lookbook on Insta, or there's a lookbook, little minutes worth. I posted on Instagram today, so you guys can go check that out, link below. And then, um, my full length or in more detail lookbook will be coming out on this channel very soon. Um, within like the end of this week or somewhere around there the beginning of next week end of this week somewhere in there and then I've been you know in talks with other companies to work with them that I am just like beyond excited and blessed to have that opportunity and um, I don't know, God has been very good to me and I feel very blessed that he kind of aligned the stars to put me in a place where I could be okay with leaving supercuts and a full-time stable income and um, pursue my dreams of, you know, being independent cosmetologist and a YouTuber. So, yep, there's that. And uh, what else? Mm. Aside from that, a <laughs> little side note, uh, as you guys may know, I'm like super in love with and obsessed with RuPaul's Drag Race. And the current season on right now is All Stars 2. Ugh. <sighs> adore you broke my heart I get it I get it though I watched like the first episode Michelle Visage was a fucking bitch like let's just call it what it is she fucking went in and ripped a door another asshole like just fucking tore her up and spit her out and critiqued her on everything except for the talent show which was the fucking challenge at hand so that kind of pissed me off and I'm like oh really no really you're gonna be a complete bitch and judge her for them for, for something that <sighs> let me calm down <laughs> I watched the little talking scene where Danny adore talks about um, you know what really happened why he chose to leave and all that kind of stuff and he just kind of said that Raven Simone said something real shitty and just really gross and uncalled for and that's when he was kind of like you know what this is not for me fucking bye so yeah Raven Simone bitch like no thank you <laughs> that's, I'm just, I'll just leave it at that no fucking thank you Ugh. and then when she does like panels and she's like so you guys all won your season so how did you make it on all stars I'm like but none of them won. That's that's why they're on All Stars, so they can have the potential to win. And you're like mispronouncing their names, and I'm just like, how did you get this job? How and why? Why? Somebody fire her, please. Okay, that's my RuPaul's <laughs> my RuPaul's Drag Race rant. Got that done, over with. Anyways, so the whole reason that I decided to jump on this camera with no makeup and my hair in a fucking bun and just fucking now 12.48 at night. Originally when I filmed this it was midnight, but now it's 12.48 because fuck. Um, it was because I was commenting on one of my friends on Facebook. She posted a comment or like a notification or whatever saying how um, she was having a conversation with a friend and that friend was telling her how she kind of pushes people out of her life uh, and uh, you know avoids getting into really meaningful relationships with other people because of all the loss that she's experienced in her life that she doesn't want to put herself at risk for that hurt again um, and how my friend interpreted that as you need to put yourself out there you need to 
give people a chance to prove themselves good or bad and just kind of grow and learn from that. And I, I totally get that. But um, my comment to that was that I kind of understand where that girl was coming from because pretty much since I was two years old, I have lost people. My, <clears throat> pretty much my whole dad's side of the family was like out of my life as soon as I turned 10. Um, because when I was two, my papa died, which is my dad's dad. Six, my bubby died, which is my dad's mom. And then at nine, that's when my dad passed. And at that point, um, that whole side of the family lived like in all different places or I had never met them. So yeah. Um, and then there was a lot of drama with that, too, as far as, like, the the type of people that, that, like, I don't know, like, my dad's sister, we had two sisters, and one of them is very cold, and I don't care to involve myself too much, um, and the other one, I have learned to stay the fuck away from just don't even like she's that type of person where it's like keep her the fuck away from me to save myself basically um anyways so yeah I kind of got to a point in my life early on that I was kind of like either don't bother being in my life and if you want to be in my life, don't fucking leave. Like, you better not leave, don't die, don't fucking do anything to be out of my life. So I had um, a really bad separation anxiety. And uh, that was kind of self-diagnosed. A lot of how I've gotten to this point in my life is through just analyzing myself and um, coming to certain conclusions about myself based off know my past anyways so because of me feeling insecure and unwanted and less than I kind of put up with things that I shouldn't have um, some of you guys have seen my abusive relationship video which if you haven't that will be linked down below and you guys can go watch that but that's like a half hour long video so I'll kind of give you the cliff notes on it um, basically, when I was 16, I started dating this guy that I've known since 7th grade, and he wasn't the best boyfriend, and that's putting it lightly. Um, there was, I was with him for almost three years, and uh, through that time, damn near almost like just the, oh God, I don't want to say 100% of the time, but... It was pretty much the entire time, aside from, like, the first month, maybe. Um, it was riddled with just, like, emotional and mental abuse. Though he probably doesn't want to view it like that. And, um, I definitely don't want to play the victim. But, I mean, at that point in my life, I was very impressionable and insecure. And I felt like, even if he didn't intend to, he definitely played on those insecurities. And, um, every once in a while it would be physically abusive, but that was, like, few and far between. But anyways, that's, like, not an excuse. If it happens once, that's, like, too much, you know? Once is more than enough. Like, it shouldn't have even been any, like, it shouldn't have been anywhere in a relationship ever, but it was, unfortunately. And, um, I didn't learn a fucking thing from it because... When we finally broke up, and he broke up with me because emotional wreck over here fucking had daddy issues and separation anxiety, I wasn't about to dump anybody. So he dumped me <laughs> for a 14-year-old, and we were 18 at the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, well, he was 18. I was 19. Anyways, so... <laughs> Six months after we broke up, um, I started dating another guy, 
and I didn't learn shit about myself or about what I deserved and what I didn't deserve in that little six month gap because why would you do that when you don't like yourself? Why would you want to be alone with yourself? Um, that was pretty much how I thought at the time. Anyways, so I started dating this guy and he was a, like, he's a nice guy, but him and I together was not a good combination. And, um, yeah, so I was with that guy for a year and that one was mostly emotionally abusive. Um, there was no physical abuse whatsoever. If anything, it was just um, me not wanting to let go to, of a relationship that clearly needed to end. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, then I decided to move up here. Basically, I didn't become comfortable in my own skin and being with myself alone in my own company. I wasn't okay with that up until I was like 21, almost 22. Um, yeah, so it took me moving to a completely different place because I'm originally from Orange County and now I live in Fresno, so that's like four or five hours away from my hometown. So it took me moving away and finally like focusing on myself like I, I that's when I started going to beauty school and um, like I was seeing some guys like I never was in a relationship with anybody while I was up here I was never anybody's girlfriend nobody was my boyfriend um, I would talk to some guys but for the most part I was kind of just like my fucking blinders on for school and focusing on my future and what I wanted to do and finally realizing that being single was fucking fun and going out and not having to tell anybody you know oh this is where I'm gonna be babe don't worry and being able to flirt and like all this kind of shit not having to fucking deal with anybody else's bullshit and just be all in my onesies I kind of learned to love that and so um I decided to be single for about a year and a half and then Cody came into my life and here we are married almost five years later well married a year later but we've been together for almost five years now and um, yeah it's fucking crazy but it is so worth it and I guess um, why I brought up all of that shit was basically that to tell you guys if you're ever in a place in your life where you feel like you aren't worthy, where you feel like you can't be happy and content sitting alone in a room doing your own thing. If you feel like you can't be comfortable in your own skin, just know that you're not the only person that's ever felt that way, but that you can't go on doing that to yourself. You are denying yourself happiness because like you sit there and you feel fucking uncomfortable and you put up with bullshit from people that you know deep down you don't deserve to deal with that bullshit yet you're scared to say something because you're afraid of hurting their feelings or how they might take it but I mean at the end of the day you have to live with yourself if you don't like that person or you feel like they're treating you less than how you should be treated bye boy bye like I don't need your shit um, and that doesn't mean you need to be an asshole about it just be respectful but it also know that you need to stand up for yourself and it's not gonna be easy at first there was this one guy in particular, and it's so fucking weird. I haven't told anybody this story. Well, I told, like, two people this story. Cody was one, and then there was, like, one other person. But anyways, um, so there was one guy in particular that I was kind of talking to uh, in Fresno when I, like, was first moved here. And um, it's when I started kind of feeling that vibe like feeling myself about like oh I like being single and blah 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 and all this kind of shit and I uh, I was talking to him and he would flirt with me and 
I could tell, like, I was like, I can't, I'm not feeling it, but I guess I'll just kind of play along. And, um, yeah, and then it, like, eventually progressed into him, like, being like, I want you to be my girlfriend. And I'm like, nope, no. And he, like, he was like, why? And I'm like, dude, because, okay, for one thing, I'm older than him. Like, I was 21 at the time, and he was, like, 19, which that already freaked me out that he was a teenager, and I was, like, 21. Anyways, um, <clears throat> I'm like, so there's that. At the time, I was planning on moving back to Orange County. And for three, I told him straight up, like, look, I don't fucking like you like that. Like, I just be straight with these people. Like, playing games will get you in trouble. So I just told him what was up. And um, he was like, well, fine, then can you send me nudes? And I'm like, boy, bye. Get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> and, like, that was it. Um, but the weird thing was... When Cody and I got married and we got back from our little honeymoon trip, we went to City Hall to like finalize our marriage license. And I'm not fucking kidding you guys. That guy, that same guy, was in front of us. Like he was directly in front of us in line. I think he was doing the same thing, finalizing his marriage license, because I think the lady he was with, like the girl he was with, had a ring on, I'm not sure, but I know for sure she was pregnant, I know that for sure, anyways, so they were in line, in front of us, all kissing and huggy, and I was kind of just like, see, God works in mysterious ways, man, <laughs> so it's just weird, um, but it all goes back to respecting yourself and loving yourself enough to, uh, say no, and to not just accept what's in front of you and to you know wait until you know you're worth it and that that this relationship or this opportunity or this job or whatever it is is what's in your best interest and it's not just accept it because you know you get what you get that's not it at all so um yeah and I'm gonna quote RuPaul and say if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you going to love somebody else? Can I get an amen up in here? Amen. <laughs> that. And um, I think RuPaul said his mom would tell him this. But it was, uh, what other people have to say about me is none of my business. And also, if they ain't paying your bills, pay them no mind. Which is something I think I kind of want to end my videos on saying. And be like, yeah. I think that'd be kind of like a nice little send-off, little encouragement with a bit of sass. Um, but yeah, guys, that's it. Another 20-minute ramble. Now it's 1 a.m. And um, that's it. I'll see you guys next time. Love you. And remember, if they ain't paying your bills, pay them no mind.